Au Kenny. Okay, so, man, crazy in the zen zone right now. But anyways, okay, so my practical recommendation is when you see scenes like that, it's pretty cool. Like we saw the old guy just chilling there and the instinct is if you see a good street scene, you just want to take one or two photos and just run away because the psychology of street photography is that A, you feel like you're doing something wrong, B, there's the physical, physiological fear that, oh, the person's going to notice me photographing them and they're going to get angry at me, blah, blah, blah. But in fact, you know, you're not doing anything wrong and it's better to linger and just keep taking photos. That's kind of a nice, <laughs> it's kind of a cool little scene here. Get a little bit of the blue sky and... Shooting? Okay, anyways, so... It's important is if you're walking on the streets and you see something interesting for you to linger and for you to just keep working the scene and taking photos of the scene not to just take one or two photos and then instantly instantly run away sorry I'm getting distracted because I will see all these really nice beautiful things kids in the neighborhood it's pretty pretty nice day out anyways so it's really important to work the scene in street photography. So what does it mean to work the scene? The work the scene means to see somebody, to identify a subject, and not to just take one or two photos and run away, but rather to linger, to hang around, to keep working the scene from different angles, taking a step forward, taking a step back, taking a step to the left, taking a step to the right, and essentially, um, Keep shooting and then if people notice you and make eye contact with you, you can either once again keep moving around and either you could pretend like you're photographing something behind them or you could just make eye contact with them, smile and wave and just keep shooting. And so there's so many different strategies and tips and techniques in street photography, but I think ultimately the most important thing is for you to remember that A, you're not doing anything wrong and B, at worst, you're only minorly annoying somebody and C, it's your duty as a photographer and as a street photographer to make beautiful images. So don't let the fear of you up minorly upsetting somebody get in the way. Oh, that's a nice little... Man, the aesthetics in Japan are so nice. Love these super zen... storefronts with these nice wood and leading lines. And then I'm gonna build my house to look something like this. Hello. Generally, one thing I like to do is premeditate or expect decisive moments to occur. So for example, if I'm photographing in a parade or a park or even at a cafe, I know that there's lots of interesting decisive moments that are waiting to occur. So it's your job as a photographer to be patient, to be observant, and to also have your camera ready with you to photograph. Generally with photography, I like to keep my camera in P program mode because I think less about my technical settings and focus more on capturing interesting moments. Also know in every scene, there could be hundreds if not thousands of decisive moments. So whenever you see any moments or gestures which are interesting to you, take lots of photos of the scene and know that there's not just one decisive moment. 
make lots of photos of the scene, and then when you go home, sit down at your computer and choose your best images afterwards. Hey friends, in this exciting live demo, I'll take you behind the seats of my camera to show how I shoot street photography on the streets of Kyoto. I'll show you some advanced street photography techniques, composition, framing techniques, as well as trying to take on a different perspective. I'll show you how I crouch down, work the scene, and also wait for people to enter my frame. Uh, the loudness is from the streets of Kyoto. Please bear with the audio, but thank you so much for watching and hopefully you guys have a fun, exciting time watching this video. You have all these epic overpasses and you could be up shooting down, or what you could even do is, you see all these nice leading lines, and then you got these guys coming, you crouch down, you look close, So even here, I'm at a high angle, shooting down, and essentially just trying to isolate the subject. And when I'm shooting, I'm also looking at the edges of the frame. I'm not trying to get a messy background. Switching up your angles. Even you could do is get things in the foreground. So like this stuff in the foreground. Essentially, I'm just going to pull the camera up, change the orientation, photographing him going down. Oh, this is really good, working the scene, get the scene here. Yeah, so kind of realized that um, also in street photography, there's certain scenes like this, like kind of the fishing technique. You wait for people to go down, and you can just photograph around here. Even remember when I was photographing here. You could crouch down super low and photograph looking up. Or even changing your position, seeing these people walk down. You get a selfie of me in the foreground, creating more dynamic scenes of people walking down. He's looking up, which is good. Take a few photos and cut in front a little bit diagonal here and then start shooting head on and then she walks around me back the other way. Hey friends, in this fun activity, what you're going to do is go out and make a bunch of photos just around your block. So my suggestion is go out for about 15 minutes and photograph whatever you find interesting and you must take at least 10 photos of every scene that you find interesting. Then when you go home and import your photos into Lightroom, what I want you to do is by only using the grid view and you could access the grid view in Lightroom with the hotkey G, scroll through your images quickly and based on the small thumbnails, pick your photos which you think are the best. And the rule is you're only allowed to pick what you consider your best three photos of the day. And the benefit of this activity is that sometimes by seeing our photos full screen, we get distracted and we don't know what the best composition is. Also, the small thumbnail test is a good way for us to quickly and effectively look through our images. When you pick your best three pictures in Lightroom, then the bottom right corner where it says filter filters off, click flagged, choose your best three pictures, press command A to select all the images, click export, and you could export this to your desktop, make a click choose, put in a subfolder, top three, and you could title this, let's say Eric Kim 
Lisbon and make sure that the file settings are 80% you don't have to adjust anything else put out put sharpening by default and just click export and what I want you to do is upload your best three favorite pictures to the Eric Kim forum and give feedback and critique to other people in the thread okay go out and have fun